Okay, today we need to perform replacement of the fuel filter on CFM 56-5B, which belongs A320. And as always, I would like to show you how to do it. So let's take a look at it. As always, we need to start with opening of the fan curls. <coughs> we have uh, three locks on each fan curl. And first one is secured with the key. So we'll open it and actually you are not able to remove the key whenever the latch is open. Yeah, then it's simple. This is prevention against uh, like forgetting to leave the latches open. Just open fan curls. And the other side as well. Okay, let's start. Uh, this is one of the few tasks when you don't need to pull the CBs because if you pull the CB, you will actually open the low pressure valve, which is in the pylon, and you will have a fuel leak, which we want to avoid. So we, I left the uh, the sticker in the cockpit to don't you, to don't pull uh, the CB, and of course to do not operate the fuel pumps as well, because that can be a problem as well. So let's start. Um, we need to drain it first. The drain port is secured with a lock wire, so that's an easy task. Later on, so we need to secure it. Good. There should be something around 5 liters, so let's see. Okay. Whenever we need to remove it inside um, the cover holds on the place thanks to six uh, uh, nut slash bolts because not all of them are bolts five of them are the nuts one is bolt almost all fuel is out so we can start with uh, removing of the cover uh, sometimes it's really stuck inside so we'll need to use a force but uh, for that this handle is good for we might gonna have some uh, noise from the hangar because of course maintenance is, is in progress so. yeah be careful there are also washers so try to don't lose them in the bucket because of course then you need to put your hand inside yeah. that's a second nut and washer we need to of course inspect them if they're in good condition Last one is the best one. And the last one is a bolt. Good. So, that was the last one. No. We need to try somehow pull the cover out oh yeah our is good our is easy to pull that's good yes and it's out we have it out 
that is holding on both sides. Uh, since the fuel uh, comes from the outside, uh, from the from the fuel tanks, it gets through the filter and then through the middle, inside towards the high pressure pump, and then it enters into the HMU, and then it's delivered to all the valves uh, and of course to the fuel nozzles. Now we need to inspect the, the filter, take a bigger screwdriver and we need to look between the ribs and look for metallica particles, rubber particles, anything what can be a problem. What does it mean if you find, for example, metallic particles inside of the filter? Well, it can be anything from the tanks uh, all the way to the boost pumps, which actually delivers the fuel to the engine itself or engines. So if you find a huge amount of the particles, metallic particles, um, it really can be the boost pump and there you might have a problem but that's a story for some another time but yeah the, that can be one of the issues plus one million others just one small information let's take a look how it looks inside so you can see uh, lines which brings the fuel and of course the line to which the fuel gets into the system so yeah now we know how it looks inside we can prepare everything for installation which means cleaning of the housing replacement of the o-rings and as well cover we need to remove all unwanted materials but this one was clean but anyway let's prepare it <coughs> let's cut the old ones so we're not gonna make mistakes so this is our first one then we have a drain plug as well let's cut it good so this is ready now the new o-ring for the cover we need to soak it in the fuel install it so that was a filter then drain port the same procedure yeah. so new o-rings now new filter you can find the uh, o-rings already inside of it so we will again soak it in the fuel And before installation, we need to apply with the Vaseline on it. Then we insert it into the cover. So I need to be sure that it sits. Good. I'll take another glove. We'll do the same thing with uh, all O-rings. So a bit of Vaseline. And we'll insert it inside.
good. So, as you can see, it sits. You can proceed with the installation of the nuts. And the bolt is the last one. Lightly tight. All nuts and bolts. A few moments later. Okay. Now the door procedure. So let's talk it one by one. Yeah, the torque wrench is a bit overkill, size way, but especially for such a small torque value. Good. Now we'll proceed with the drain port. Second. Basically, it goes all the way. <sighs> Torque value for drain plug. Good. Okay, duplicate inspection performed. We can look at it. Make nice cross. All that's remaining is cleaning, of course. We don't want to leave mess behind, especially with a leak check. That's it. Regarding installation, all uh, is done. Now all that's remaining is to close uh, fan cowls and we need to perform uh, engine run because uh, the manual requires a uh, minimum idle for leak check. So since uh, duplicate inspection has been performed, we can close it and we'll perform the test. During startup, we need to monitor several parameters like N1, N2, EGT fuel flow, which is very important for us at this moment, ignition, which will start to work around 16% of N2, then oil pressure and the pressure in the bleed duct, which actually drives the starter. Fuel start to flow into the engine around 22% of N2, and from this point you can see that even EGT are raising, which means that engine works as it should. Starter and ignition will stop automatically approximately around 50% of N2, because from this point engine can run without support. And meanwhile our colleague monitor situation from the outside if there is no leak from the engine. Leak check has been performed, the engine is a bit hot, but uh, we can take a look on the filter itself and as you can see there is no leak, everything is as it should. So yep, we can uh, close the engine and all what's remaining is paperwork. Um, that's all about uh, engine uh, fuel filter. 
If you have any questions, as always, please write them down in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to answer to them. Uh, of course, as always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. That was all from my side. My name is Tomasz. This was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto. And I'll see you next one. Bye.